Greetings, everyone. Thank you for inviting me to speak at this uh, 20th, 26th anniversary of Pedagogy Club Indonesia and uh, Indonesia Autosidic Spine Society meeting. And uh, today we'll be talking about lumbar fusion in spinal endoscopy, this uh, integrated uh, video conversation and uh, meeting discussion. So we'll be uh, doing a live example. In Singapore, we don't really have an opportunity to uh, al or allow to film real life in uh, theater. So I use uh, integrated um, cadaveric workshop together with some intraoperative video to make it comprehensive for participants. I'm a um, self-introduction. I'm a consultant orthopedic surgeon. I practice in Mount Elizabeth Hospital and Mount Yenobina Hospital. These are my clinics. I'm uh, actually a private orthopedic spine surgeon. 80% uh, of my spine surgeries are done using endoscopy and uh, half of them uniportal, half of them bipodal, uh, more and more bipodal in these days. And... Um, most of them stenosis, discectomy, fusion, and uh, cervical thoracic cases. These are my conflict of interest. It is relevant for this topic. Essentially, for fusion, we need three basic requirements. A good preparation of fusion bed, bone graft, and fusion device uh, insertion, immobilization, and then hopefully we correct um, very well the sagittal coronal and transitional alignment. There are several approaches in uh, bipolar endoscopy. Generally, the two main common uh, approaches will be that of the UBE fusion, which use the trans foraminal, uh, extended trans foraminal window, and what we call extreme lateral elift, which is essentially very much um, at the uh, lateral aspects of the facet joint. Of course, uh, both of them involve with moving the facet joint. Uh, in this step-by-step uh, -step guide, I also would like to credit my uh, international fellow from China. He's from uh, Nantong. He's also called Mr. Dr. Wu, or Dr. Wu Chun Shui. So some of the slides are prepared by him, and uh, this is um, essentially step-by-step -step guide on UBE T-Lift. So let's go to the case. This is a 48-year-old male. He has a lower back pain and left lateral calf pain for three months. He has tried physiotherapy but had not gotten better. His examination shows that he has a power fall in the left L5 and decreased sensation over the left L5 as well. His strict leg raise is a negative. In the MRI, you can see that he has a significant foraminal stenosis, left side more than the right side in the L5-S1, as well as a grade 1 spondylolisthesis. This is a lytic spondylolisthesis. In the fraction extension film, you can see that there's a greater translation of the L5 over S1. After informed consent, the patient uh, agreed to go for a left-sided lumbar 5 sacral 1 UBE transforminal lumbar interbody fusion. This uh, setting that I have done in Punle, uh, but it is very similar. We have the patient mark. Uh, first, starting at the correct this level, I would done, have done a lateral view to ensure that the um, M plate is uh, perpendicular to the ground as far as possible. And then mark the midline, lateral particular line. And then uh, over the, in the left side, we will have a high, slightly higher portals will be the upper pedicle of L5. And uh, in the right side will be the uh, lower pedicle of L5-S1. So we do the AP lateral view to confirm the finding and we insert the endoscope. After we insert the endoscope, we have um, to uh, essentially identify the wood point, so-called is described in the literature uh, that is in the spinal, uh, in the middle 
medial part of the facet joint close to the spinal lamina junction uh, with the overlap of the inferior articular process and the superior articular process medially. And then we identify that of the lateral aspect of the superior articular facets, we have to release the capsule. And then using a chisel, we can remove the um, uh, inferior articular process first to expose the superior articular process. It is uh, challenging to sometimes remove the entire inferior articular process. So sometimes we remove them piecemeal. As you can see in this video, we remove the inferior articular process piecemeal, as you can see using a chisel. Using a chisel is a good tool because uh, we can harvest the bone blocks uh, in uh, very big pieces, rather than that of uh, using a drill where, where, where they will be drilled to bone dust. It would be good to use a kind of a retraction device. It can be a metallic one, it can be a plastic one. Um, in this case, we use the plastic one. So essentially, we now have removed the lateral aspect uh, of the inverticular process, and now we remove the medial part of the uh, inverticular process. After you removed completely the inverticular process, you on the medial part, you will be able to see some sort of the superficial uh, superficial flavor. And then uh, we do a superior articular process facetectomy. Uh, it can be done using the chisel in the combination of chisel kerosene. Uh, we can remove the superior articular process. And this is the last bit of the inferior articular process. Excuse me. And then you can see the super, uh, ligamentum flavor essentially. And subsequently, we remove the superior articular process. Upon a complete removal of the superior articular process of S1, then you will be able to see the um, traversing nerve root. Sometimes we leave the medial part of the ligamentum flavum to protect the traversing nerve root. It's entirely up to the surgeon whether you want to expose the traversing nerve root uh, altogether or uh, just the removing part of it. So after that, we cleared up and then uh, we clean up the pedicle. Sometimes we need to just trim a bit of the superior uh, edge of the pedicle to ensure a more smooth transition of the cage insertion. So you guess, as you can see, um, it is, we are slowly detaching the uh, ligamentum flavor and removing that of the uh, inferior process. You can use a chisel or you can use a kerosene. Uh, the depends on your uh, which one you're more comfortable with. The beauty of the endoscopic fusion is that uh, throughout the process, there is uh, very little blood loss because the saline pressure essentially decreased the, uh, for all those uh, microcirculation bleeding. And then subsequently, we can be removing the ligamentum flavum. It is pretty, it is quite natural for the ligamentum flavum to drop off that of the, um, of the lateral edge of the traversing nerve fluids once we have removed the superior articular process and the inferior articular process. At this moment of time, we can make a decision of whether we want to do over-the-top decompression on the control lateral side, typically following the ligamentum flavum to the opposite side. In this case, this patient, as you can see uh, in the previous MRI, have no significant uh, central or lateral recess compression, as it is a lytic listesis. More importantly, this of the reduction of the listesis as well as that of the decompression of the uh, exiting nerve root. 
In a patient with a grade two and above spondylolisthesis, disease, it's advisable to remove the both uh, facet joints so that when uh, on, upon reduction, there won't be impingement of the exiting nerve of the contralateral side. This process can be a uh, um quite time um take some time when we remove the ligamentum flavor, but uh, this is a real time, and we can remove them gradually. Sometimes there will be creeping of the muscles of the above, so we tend to just um get underneath it and then uh, remove them accordingly. We assess whether after we remove the facet joint, there's sufficient space for the cage insertion. If not, then we can enlarge them further by using kerosene or drill. After we uh, remove the um, um, that the ligamentum flavor, we will be exposing that of the disc space. In this case, as a little we confirm that by using the lateral view of the C arm and then see whether we are at the correct level of the disc space. <laughs> Finding the correct level of this is important, so we use lateral view to uh, find the disc cut. You can use the chisel gently also, but uh, do not go too deep. So as to create insufficient space for the cage to be uh, inserted. In a great tool, this is such as this case, sometimes the um, rounded edge of the <coughs> uh, sacrum can be an um, impingement or can be a impeding the entry of the cage. And so uh, you can use the kerosene to open it up a little bit over the S1. I suggest when we start doing endoscopic fusion, do not do, do a grade two or um, grade three listesis. I think grade three listesis is generally a very challenging case. Grade two listesis is possible. So after we open up the um, end plate properly, you can see that we can enter the first trial. And then uh, after we enter the first trial, we can use um, this cut, um, this forceps as well as a shaver uh, that we use in the traditional open surgery to prepare the end plate. I think use the uh, smallest dilator first to find a good trajectory before you, under the CM guidance, of course, to uh, before you enter or using the shavers and larger dilators. Sometimes in cases such as this, uh, which is a great tool, this is uh, the disc is rather empty. There's not a lot of disc inside, but the challenge is uh, to gain the correct trajectory without violating the end plate. So now we can use forceps to clean up. If we use the uh, radio frequency, then uh, we have to only add, um, uh, basically share, apply it to the posterior third where the fusion doesn't necessarily take place. And then now we insert the cage inserter. And then subsequently you can use it to uh, bang cage in. As you can see from this uh, demonstration in Pune, uh, we are using metal retractor to retract the exiting nerve root, find the correct tra tra trajectory, and then um, pre prepare the disc. Okay. It's all under direct endoscopic vision. You can see the age of the trouble signal through, so it's very clear, and then we can insert the cage glider.
Finally, uh, with a good assistant, in this case, Kaden uh, speak and uh, insert the cage. And uh, in Pune, we were doing x lift, so we uh, have to horizontal, have to gra gradually horizontalize the cage. But uh, in the, the actual case, um, when I did that in Singapore, a, month, a few couple of months back, we actually just insert the cage directly using a um, T lift cage that we use in open surgery. And then we insert the percutaneous uh, uh, screw insertion. Uh, I was contemplating whether I should reduce it fully. Um, I think there's a couple of considerations. It got a very small pedicle. This size of the screw is 5.5. Uh, the small pedicle actually is more of that of the uh, height, which is the height of uh, the uh, diameter is really short. So uh, I would rather not give too much stress for the screw so that I reduce it to grade one. The beauty of this uh, surgery is that the patient usually do very well. It pulls up six hours, they can walk. This is, uh, done many of these cases have not yet needed to transfuse any patient. Most of them are discharged on post-op day one or two. Okay, thank you very much for everyone to uh, listen in to uh, about how we do this endoscopic fusion. Have a great meeting and uh, I see you in the meeting in my coming talks and moderation session. Thank you very much.